Hi, and welcome to the SAT Best Practices Workshop. My name is Ojis Vishishta, and I'm a senior at Archbishop Midi High School. Some things about me, I love playing basketball, I love watching movies, and I like reading books. I took the SAT last November, and I scored a 15-20, and I was, that was a 99 percentile across the nation. So about this course, it is a basic intro to the SAT, which will cover specific sections. It will also cover do's and don'ts, what to do and what not to do when preparing for the SAT and while taking it. I'll also be covering my personal SAT journey and what I did to get a good score and essential practices for getting the best score on the SAT. So this is a general introduction to the SAT that will include specifics on each section, which includes tips and tricks on how to do the best job on each section and each specific part. The course will allow students to learn more about the SAT and the best ways to prepare for the tests. And this is only one session and there are really no technical requirements. So some goals for this session or objectives. Uh, after the session, you wanna have an in-depth knowledge of each part of the SAT, no specific tips and tricks to do well on each part of the exam, know what not to do and what to do during the test and while preparing for it. And another thing that's important is having a timetable to prepare for the test in the best way so that you're organized and not just haphazardly preparing. So let's cover the first basic understanding of the SAT. What is the SAT? So the SAT includes reading, is a, or the school assessment test, is a, test, is a standardized test that will test students on their reading, writing, and math skills. So it includes a reading section, a language section, or a writing section, two math sections, one will be calculator and one will not be calculator, and an optional essay. So why is it so important to get a good score on the SAT? So why is there so much stress on the SAT? So although the SAT may only be one part of the college application process, getting a good score is imperative if you want to set yourself apart from students with similar GPAs, academics, and resumes. So getting a good score on the SAT shows colleges that your test scores or on in school were not a fluke and that you can actually score well in areas such as math and language. So let's cover the first section of the exam, which is reading is the longest one as well with 52 questions and 65 minutes to answer. The format is there will be five passages, which will most likely will include fiction, scientific journals, historical essays, articles, etc. So the types of questions will be major themes or ideas. So what is the major idea of this passage or something like that? Or what is the theme of this passage? They'll also be asked to find evidence from the passage, which proves your answer to a previous question. So let's suppose a question is, what's the major idea of this passage? And then another question will be, uh, what is one excerpt from the passage which proves your previous answer? There'll also be vocabulary and context of the passage. So what is the meaning of read in the context of the passage, for example? So it'll take a word from the passage, which may have different definitions and ask you, to find the definition of the word in context of the passage, so not a dictionary definition. There will also be graph and table analysis. So for example, if it's a scientific journal, it will give some statistics and it'll ask you to analyze those statistics. So that's essentially what will be on the test. There will also be some questions on characters or something like that, but this is basically a good overview. So these are the tips on how to do well in this section. So reading is often, for most people, they consider it the most challenging part of the test, since not all the answers are very straightforward. There can be multiple answers and the questions can be pretty challenging. So one of the biggest things to do is close read or mark the passage as you read. So underline important details, main ideas, and other stuff, because, because underlining the, um, these details or main ideas really helps it stick inside your mind. So you don't have to keep on going back and forth between the passages and the questions. And underlying the main ideas and the characters or details uh, organizes the passage for you so it's clearer in your head. This is really the biggest thing you have to do when doing the reading section. Although it, might, it seems like it may take too much time, you have to get really practice this and it can be really helpful while taking the test. Another thing you can do is read the questions and answer choices first. So if you do not understand what the passage is saying, so for example, some of the historical ones, they take historical passages from many uh, centuries ago. So you want like the 1800s. So if you don't understand what the vocabulary is or what exactly the main idea of the passage is, sometimes there will be a question like, what is the main idea? And you can look over the answer choices and see which one is the best way. So reading the question and the answer choices can really help guide you through what the passage is trying to say. 
So that can be helpful. Another thing which is important is that you choose the best answer to the question. So this can be a little confusing since you think the right answer is always the best answer. So sometimes the answer choices may be half right or somewhat right, or some answers may both seem right. So you want to make sure that you don't choose the one that's half right, that answers one part of the question correctly, but not the other part. So choose the one that best answers the question or answers the question completely. And then the simplest way to prepare for the reading part of the test is reading in general. So practice reading passages or just simply read a book. And that really helps you organize main themes, characters, evidence from the passage and stuff like that. So get yourself familiar with what the passages would be or basic reading. So the next section of the SAT is the writing portion, which is the shortest portion of the test, 44 questions and only 35 minutes to answer. So you answer these questions similar to reading in context to a passage. So types of questions will be grammatical errors, whether it, it, one word is plural or a pronoun is plural when it isn't supposed to be. You'll also be uh, asked to find punctuation, run on or conjunction errors. So let's suppose it says, but instead of and, it will be given this choice of answers, which asks you to either replace the incorrect answer with another conjunction like and, or it'll make no change. So there will be an option for no change for some questions, which means what's already in the passage is already right. Another type of question that will show up is choose which sentence bits fits best in the context of the passage. So that's basically a rundown of the writing section and the format. The tips on how to do well on the writing section. Don't read, you don't always have to read the entire passage because they're only, you only have 35 minutes and you need to go quick. So if you feel like there's no questions pertaining to the passage at the, or to that particular section of the passage, since the questions will be numbered in the passage itself, you don't have to read the full passage. You can skim over some parts, but try not to always read the entire passage or else that could take time. And you also don't have to close read the passages for this one. If you find that it's helpful for you, go ahead and do it, but I wouldn't recommend it since it would take too much time. Um, another thing is that even if you're skimming over the passage, read the part of the passage the question relates to carefully because that's like, it, it's testing you on grammatical errors, errors that we make while we're writing quickly or reading quickly and our brain automatically fixes. So if you're, if you're going through a passage too fast, you can miss an error and write no change when there actually is a change necessary. So don't skim over the question, read the part of the passage really carefully. Another quick tip is simply review grammar. Although the writing section will really test you on stuff you already know, it doesn't hurt to help uh, review some obscure grammar rules that could be there like, do I use a hyphen or a comma or something like that. So just review basic grammar rules and that can, you know, if you, um, it could be a question on the test that you weren't familiar with before, but you are now and you get that right. And getting one question right goes a long way if you're uh, aiming for a high score. And you should also read the question carefully since sometimes the questions will most likely be uh, either replace the incorrect answer with the correct answer or no change, but sometimes they'll have different types of questions. So just make sure you're reading the question carefully instead of, and you don't answer the wrong question because you've gotten too used to a certain type of question. All right, so now here comes one of the biggest sections of the test, which is the math section. It's divided into two parts, which is no calculator and calculator. No calculator is first, calculator is second. And this goes up to topics in algebra too. So if you're taking this in junior year, it should hope, uh, mostly be everything you already know. So the format is, yeah, again, no calc is first, it's 25 minutes and 20 questions. So this is the smaller one and it's the quicker one. And then calculator is 55 minutes for 38 questions. The types of questions will be basic algebra, equations, system equations, functions, and rates, graphs, geometry, et cetera. So basically everything you find up to algebra two, which will include geometry and all the basic stuff. So for the no calculator section, 25 minutes to answer 20 questions. And this is where the format changes from previous uh, sections. So it'll be 15 multiple choice and five free response. So these free response will be at the end. So it will be 15 multiple choice first and then the five free response and only math does this. So no other section will have free response questions. So some important tips for math. So the questions usually aren't too challenging because again, it's just going up to algebra two. So you should probably already know this stuff. 
the problem of the test, like what it's really testing you on is can you complete all these questions in the given time? So that means you have to go fast. You cannot stick around and wait on one question because then you won't answer one question. So if you get stuck, skip that question and then go back because you need to finish all the questions in time. You have to finish all the questions. Even if at the end you're guessing, you have to put in the answer. Do not skip a question. Do not leave a question blank. The purpose of the math test really, especially the no calculator, since that's easier than the calculated one, at least for me, you have to finish all the questions in time. It's a not really a long time. 25 minutes may seem long for 20 questions, but sometimes it isn't, especially if there's like one tricky question which you're just not able to solve at first glance. So if you're stuck, this is really important. You have to skip that question and go back to it. Don't waste more than a minute max on one question. And this is the, one of the, uh, another challenge on the math portion, especially no calculator. While you're going fast, you have to be careful at the same time. Because again, the, the test itself is conceptually not too bad. It's pretty easy. So the easiest way to miss a question or to get a question wrong on the test is to make a mistake while you're going too fast. Or like to make a simple mistake that the SAT is thinking you're gonna make. So that's why you see a multiple choice answer and you put it down. So it's anticipating it's anticipating that you're gonna get a question wrong because you went too fast. So if you have time, go back and check your work, if you have time. Otherwise, just try to be careful because again, conceptually, the test is not too bad, but you can make a mistake while going too fast. So you have to go fast, but at the same time, you have to be careful. So that's basically the challenge of the math, no calc section. So now this is the second part of the math, calc of, of the math test, which is the calculator section. It's 38 questions, 55 minutes for, to answer those 38 questions. It's similar to the no calc in that there are 30 multiple choice first and then eight free response at the end. So basically similar tips to the no calculator session, which is go fast. Do not dwell on one question for too long. If you, um, if you do that, you will not be able to finish all the questions. So if you're stuck on one, if you feel like 30, 40 seconds in, you don't know how to solve a problem, skip it, come back later. Also, do not always use a calculator. This is another way many people waste time. The questions are designed so that you will not always use a calculator. Oftentimes you think you'll have to use a calculator and you won't have to. And the way you won't, the, pro the math process in which you don't have to use a calculator is far quicker. So using a calculator every time to check a work if you made a mistake or something can be very time consuming. Don't do it. If you feel you don't need a calculator for it, you don't need a calculator for it. You should know your stuff at this point. So you don't always have to check your work with a calculator. Another important thing is know your graphs. The, uh, the calc session is gonna have a lot of graphs graph analysis, know your charts and tables as well. So those are basic tips for the calculator section. Pretty similar to the no calc, just again, remember don't always use a calculator. That's just a huge waste of time. Now this is going to be the last portion or the last section of the SAT, which is the essay. It's technically optional. You, got, you should check to see if the college you're interested in applying to requires the essay, but most competitive colleges require the essay. So if you're on, if you're undecided about whether to sign up or not, just sign up. It won't hurt. And then you also don't have to check specifically for this college if it requires an essay on. Sign up for the essay. It's, it really won't hurt. So what is the essay on? So what are you writing an essay on? So this, we're going to go back to the reading portion here. So the, the SAT clearly has an emphasis on reading. So you will read an article in which the author argues for a certain position. So for example, let's say the author is arguing that cell phones should be banned. So they will, you will read an article in which the author describes to the audience why it should be banned. So the essay is in the, the essay will describe, in, you will write an essay which describes how the author uses specific techniques, such as word choice, anecdotes, symbols, metaphors, stuff like that to persuade his or her audience. So you're not writing an essay on the topic itself. You're writing an analytical essay about how the writer proves his point. So some basic tips, again, do not write an essay supporting the author's argument. That's, you will not do good on the essay. Describe how the author develops an argument. So what techniques is the author using to create an argument? Have a structured essay, you know, uh, four to five body paragraphs, clear introduction, clear conclusion. So structure is good, uh, scores like that. Don't overwrite, don't keep rambling on because then you'll, you'll get into run-on sentences. And at this point, since this is the last section of the SAT, you, you're starting to lose a little bit of focus after going through two straight math sections. 
So try to uh, stay calm and write a good structured essay and don't overwrite. And again, this is important. Focus on techniques. So like I said, word choice, anecdotes. If you use those specific words or these specific techniques, it looks really good. It shows that you know, uh, you have literary knowledge of how authors write articles and stuff like that. So use these official terms, so to speak, and it will be pretty good. So use these specific techniques and focus on how the author develops the argument. All right, so those are all, that's the in-depth analysis, tips and tricks on each section or portion of the SAT. So here I'm gonna talk about some general advice. So the SAT itself is not too conceptually hard. It really depends on how much you practice and how you get familiar with it. So the best way to get a score is to practice. You have to take as many practice tests as possible. You have to get familiar with the SAT. You have to get familiar with the types of questions it's asking. Because once you start taking these tests, after like two, three, four tests, you'll realize that they're really asking the same types of questions, but on different material. For example, they'll ask you the same stuff on a scientific passage, same type of similar types of questions for each test. So once you get familiar with those, you'll understand what the SAT is looking for. So it's really cracking the code of the SAT and recognizing, which is important, recognizing the patterns of questions. Because once you take these four or five SATs, you'll really be more comfortable with taking it. And also your time management will improve because now you'll be able to answer these questions in a quicker time. And time management is a big part of this test. Just because again, conceptually, it's not too bad. Another big trick is to focus on things you're weak at. You know, it's not gonna help if you guys keep doing the things you're confident in that. Like if you're really good at the math section, you don't really have to focus on it since the math section is not gonna change really from test to test. It's essentially gonna be the same types of questions. So once you have enough practice, focus on your, once, once you got the SAT down, like once you figure out the patterns of questions, focus on your weaker areas. Suppose you're not, you're really good at historical questions or historical passages, but you are not very good at the scientific journal ones, or you're not very good at data um, analyzing the graphs. So focus on that. And again, one, getting one question right can go a long way for getting a higher score, especially if you're aiming for those 1500 plus scores, each question matters. And yeah, practicing specific types of questions can help once you've got a hold down on the SAT in general. And probably one of the most important things is not to stress. The SAT is only one part of the application. It's one score is not gonna reflect who you are to any college. That's why they ask you to provide essays and um, recommendations. So if you get, you know, if you get like a, uh, a 14, if you're aiming for 1500 plus and you get a 1470 and you've taken the test three times already, don't take it another time because you've probably reached your caps and don't stress about it because one test, you know, it will not judge you. It would, the colleges will not judge you off of one test. And while you're actually taking the test, take it calmly and confidently. Stressing while taking the test, well, you will not do well. You're, if your brain is super stressed at the moment, you'll not be able to focus on questions and your time management will be pretty pure. Poor. If you've practiced, if you've practiced well enough uh, leading up to the test, if you feel confident in yourself, you'll do fine. You really shouldn't stress if you think you're confident and you've practiced enough. But again, the key is practicing. All right, some do's and don'ts. Do take practice tests. Do skip questions to come back to later. This is really important. Those two are really important. You have to take practice tests to get a good score on the SAT. You will not get a good score on the SAT if you take only two or three practice tests and just do practice questions. You have to take practice tests. And another important thing, you have to skip questions and come back to later. You will not finish all the questions if you spend two minutes on one question or, or on several questions. It's not gonna work. You have to skip questions. But if, if at the end of the, uh, the day, if you only have 50 seconds left and you have to answer five questions, guess them. Do not leave a single question blank because you could always get one right. For reading, mark the passage. Um, go fast, go real fast for each section. Don't spend too much time. Use outside resources while studying for the test like uh, Khan Academy, those can always help. And another important thing, understand patterns of the questions. So understand what each SAT test will have similar types of questions. So just understand what are these types of questions asking, understand the patterns and sign up for the essay. Uh, it could do no harm, and if you're just gonna, just sign up for the essay, it won't do any harm. So what not to do? Don't take too much time on one question. Again, skip questions to come back to later, and do not take too much time on one question. Don't take only the college board practice tests. Some people probably only do these eight, seven college board practice tests and think they're ready. The college board practice tests are probably not gonna be 
as difficult as an actual test. Probably gonna be easier. So it's best to mix it up. Take the college board practice tests or take some other Barron's practice tests. Those can help. So don't take only one source. And don't use a calculator for every question on math, on the math calculator portion. And don't second guess, your, get second guess yourself, especially on reading. So sometimes you think you're, gonna, you, you're stuck between two answers and you circle one, and now you're just thinking maybe that's wrong. I've done this myself several times. You should not second guess yourself. It will waste time. Just go on. Once you answer the question, keep going. Unless you have time at the end to go back to those questions, just keep going. And this is especially important on reading because reading will, you know, the answers will seem like there's several right answers. So that's where we go back to the choose the best answer. So once you select an answer on reading, keep going. Do not dwell more on it. If you have time, go back and see the other choices, but otherwise don't second guess yourself. And then the last note, don't stress. Again, if you stress, you're just not gonna do well in the SAT. So don't stress. All right, my SAT journey. So what I personally did, score 1520. So again, the, there's a huge emphasis on practice. The best way to prepare for the SAT is to take practice tests. So I used the practice online test when college were, those, were, those are helpful kind of to understand the patterns of taking tests, but a, re a review book like Barron's is also helpful because Barron's is actually usually harder than the test. And that really helps you with the time management because if you're preparing for harder questions, when you get the easier question, time management will be much better. And going back to time management, I focus a lot on time management because the test is not too hard conceptually. You know, algebra two, you already know that stuff. Reading, you already know most of the stuff since you've been in, uh, in English classes. And when it comes to writing, it's just grammar. So you know the stuff. The, the problem is solving those questions fast. So uh, that's what I focus on. I focus on trying to solve the questions super fast and also staying focused. And you can only do that when you take enough practice SAT tests. You cannot magically become really good at time management and also staying focused. You have to take practice tests. So this is my advice for aiming for a 1500 plus score. So these are the things you have to do for getting a 1500 plus score you have to do really good in math. Math is really important because this is generally, if, if you're aiming for a 1500 plus score, you should probably be confident enough in your math skills conceptually. So you have to make sure your time management is good and you cannot get more than one or two questions wrong in math because the math scale is usually, they, the SAT considers the math questions at least uh, conceptually to be a relatively easier than the writing or reading. So the math scale is definitely not as nice as the reading ones. So getting one question wrong could equal getting, uh, instead of getting a 800, you're getting a 770. Or, or, for, or, or instead of getting 800, you're getting a 780, more like it. So don't get more than one or two questions wrong in math. If you get more than two, it's gonna be pretty hard to get a 1500 plus score on the SAT because reading and writing will also be there. I mean, they also count. If you're aiming for a 1550 plus score, Try to get an 18, try to get an 800 on math or a perfect score in math. So that means you cannot get any questions wrong in math, which is really difficult. If you're aiming for a 1550 score, you have to do that essentially. So math is really important. If you're, if you're not confident in your reading and writing skills, you have to ace math if you want a 1500 plus score or else it will not happen. And again, this is only possible if you practice and when you're practicing, you practice go fast. And in total, aim for getting only six to seven questions wrong. So I would say maybe uh, three questions wrong, three or four questions wrong in reading, two questions wrong in writing, and one on math. That's what you, the general breakdown, but in, it, it rotates for every person. So again, aim for getting only six to seven questions wrong. With practice, that won't be as hard as it sounds right now. So here are some daily practice tips I, I can give. Um, Start reviewing or practicing two or three months before the test. So if you're taking it in August this year, I'm not sure how it's gonna happen, whether it's gonna be at home or at testing centers, but regardless, start now. It's best if you start early, you know, getting familiar with the test. And if you start early, that means you'll get to take more practice tests, which is really what's good. Start with a diagnostic full length test. So that way you can address what your strengths and weaknesses are. Maybe you're really good at reading, but you're not good at math or maybe you're really good at math and not good at reading. Once you address what you're, uh, what you're bad at or what you're good at, you can focus on those things during the week so that you can do better on your practice tests. 
So focus on specific types of questions so you can do better on your practices. So here's a daily plan for one week, which I would recommend. Again, this is super flexible. You can change it to however you like it and like replace Khan Academy with something else. But this is something I would suggest. So on a Saturday, you take a test, a practice test, and hopefully if you're starting, in, if this is a new plan you're starting, it's a diagnostic. On Sunday, review the test. And this is pretty important. Redo the problems that you got wrong. If you simply just go over the question and see, oh, yeah, that's why I got, got it wrong, instead of actually doing the problems that you got wrong, you won't get better, really. You might be better if you're really good at understanding things quickly, but it's best to redo the problems that you got wrong. That can be a little tedious, but over time, that will really help you recognize the specific patterns of the SAT. Then on Monday, use a Khan Academy or another resource review reading. So this is a specific portion of the test that you can work on. Focus on weak points or the style of passage or specific questions. So Khan Academy provide passages with sample questions or maybe just like their own tips and tricks on how to do well in the reading portion. So you can use that. On Tuesday, you can review writing. So when you're writing, it's just do some practice questions or review general grammar rules. For writing, it's really just understanding how the test is and that you can do through the uh, practice tests. So maybe you forgot a grammar rules so you can review those. But writing, it's really, you can take it a little easy on that. So then we go to math. Um, there are two things you can do with math. You can either review your weak points in math, like geometry. Let's suppose you're not good at geometry, you can review those. Or another thing that's really helpful is taking a full calc or no calc test. Like no calculator test only takes 25 minutes. You can do it, you can do 20 practice questions in 25 minutes for one day. And that can be really helpful, just getting down those math questions. Or you can take a 55 minute calc test, which isn't too long. So really practicing, the best way to prepare for the math portion is practice. Take the questions because as you go on, you'll see that most of the questions are similar. Thursday, same as Wednesday. If you took a calc test on Wednesday, take a no calc test on Thursday. If you took a test, uh, if you took both calc and no calc, review your weak points on Thursday. Or do the questions you got wrong on the calc or no calc. On Friday, you can have a break because preparing for the SED can be a little overwhelming. And then Saturday, you redo the loop, which is take another test. So a good, again, the good SAT practice routine is to practice, which is the most important part of preparing for the SAT, to go fast. You have to go fast in order to get a good score. You will not get a good score if you don't go fast. You have to answer questions quickly, maybe 40 seconds per question, and you'll be fine. Use outside resources. Don't just use College Board. You can use it, but use Barron's, use Princeton Review, use Khan Academy, stuff like that. Tackle your weak points. Don't focus on things you're strong at. Focus on things you're not good at, and over time, you'll get better at them. And before the test, sleep well. You want to stay focused during the test. It is going to be around four hours long, so you need to have the brain power. So sleep well, eat a good breakfast the day of. Don't take too many practice tests before the test. Let's say it's a week before the test. Don't take five, maybe take two. You don't want to overwhelm yourself, and you don't want to stress yourself out. You definitely don't want to burn. Definitely do not take a test before the actual test. You just burn yourself out and stress yourself out. Suppose you, you know, you're unlucky, the test is harder, and you get a 1450 instead of the 1550 you're aiming for. That can put your morale down, and it will not set you up well for the test. And again, that leads into my final point. Do not stress. The SAT will be over before you know it, because you'll be in, you'll be in the moment of taking the test, and sooner or later, it'll be done. And once it's done, you're done. If you practice and you take the test seriously, if you take your preparation seriously, and really just uh, think about the tips I'm giving to you, you will have nothing to worry about because you'll have done the best you can do. So do your best, uh, do, uh, take the test to the best of your ability. Don't underprepare, don't overprepare. just take the test to the best of your ability and you'll have done what you have to do. Because again, the SAT is only one test. And they will not determine what you will be in the future. And here I have a sample one month SAT plan. If you thought the daily plan was not specific enough, Here's like a one month cram plan. You can, uh, you can adjust it or change it however you want. So I'm gonna leave it here for about five seconds if you wanna screenshot it. Yeah, again, so this is just a sample cram plan. It includes stuff like when to take practice tests, how to study for the essay, take a practice essay, take a practice math, math calc test. It's a little bit more specific. 
All right, here's some recommended resources that I have. Again, outside resources are key to preparing for the SAT. So here are some. The Barron's SAT review book. Um, it often contains harder questions than the actual test. Again, like I said, it's good for practice, but not really for conceptual review. There'll be lots of errors and grammatical errors and typos. So it's easier for practice. The Princeton Review, a premium SAT review book. The premium version provides eight tests. So again, the key is to take as many practice tests as possible. So buy the premium version. Princeton Review often has relatively accurate tests. So I've, I've taken it, not just for the SAT, but for whether I was preparing for an AP test or something like that. It's been pretty accurate and it's been like not too hard, not too easy. So that's something I would recommend. And it's good for reviewing in-depth concepts. And there's the Kaplan SAT book. The tests are a bit easier than the actual test, but you can use it for extra practice. It wouldn't hurt. You can also use the College Board online tests, or which is the official practice test the College Board provides. Use it only to get familiar with the essay and use it for extra practice or essay practice. You can also use Khan Academy Review, which is the best free in-depth review of the concepts on SAT, and it provides ample amount of practice. That's something I would really recommend. And that's something you will see is pretty popular with students. Other additional resources for additional practice for the SAT, you can use prepscholar.com, which is a full SAT course, including con and, um, in includes videos. Uh, it's not free, so use, so use only in Khan Academy is not enough. So, but Prepscholar also includes free and helpful college application information. So if that's something you feel is important, you can also use prepscholar.com for that. Another uh, resource which I didn't use was the SAT Prep Black Book. That's a top selling SAT review book. It's a bit pricey at around $26 and it contains four official college board websites which are available for free on website. Uh, if, uh, it contains four official college board tests which are available for free on the website. So for practice, it's really not helpful, but it has a really good in-depth analysis of each section. You can also use the Barron's Reading Workbook, which is good for extra practice on reading questions. It's not representative of all the types of questions that will show up. I think it's a bit older, but it can help. Then there's the Barron's Math Workbook, which is just getting extra practice in math. And the questions are more challenging than on the actual SAT. So I hope that all these additional resources and my tips and tricks will really help you get a better score on the test. Another thing which I did was keep track of my what I was practicing. So kind of have a, a checklist or a study plan. So let's suppose, let's say, basically a checklist in which I would see well, what things I did today, what things I could do the next day. That really helped me out. It just stay organized while preparing for the SAT. And again, don't stress if you if you prepare to the best of your ability. If you follow my advice, if you take the practice test serious, seriously and you practice a lot, really fine. All right, thank you.